Okay, it's announcement time before we get started with the episode. So I have a few things that I want to share with you. Number one, motherhood decoded heal the line. This is happening in person and virtually. So in case you missed it, there's an in-person motherhood decoded mini retreat on Friday, May 5th, Tampa based only DM me for information. The second part of that is virtual. Virtual is May 11th. If you need a ticket, the link is in the show notes. The second announcement, the portal still open. So if you would like to access on demand only to my business development slash personal development courses. I have a full portal of courses that's valued at over $2,000 and the monthly fee is ridiculously low. Goal is to create accessibility. So click the link in the show notes if you want on-demand access only. Third announcement, Evolutionary Business School. This is if you want on-demand access plus twice monthly live small group coaching plus community support. The Evolutionary Business School link is in the show notes. Number four, if you don't want to be in a group and you don't really want on-demand access because self-paced courses aren't your thing, you want private support and you want to work with me in a private capacity, reach out to me. You can either send me an email or a DM on Instagram. Let's set up a time to talk. I'd like to get to know you, hear about your business, hear what you want to build, hear about your motherhood experience, whatever department that you'd like my mentorship in. Let's talk about it. We'll see if it's a good fit and how I can best support you. Number five, really freaking exciting. I'm turning 40 this week, my 40 birthday, May 4th. And in honor of my birthday, I asked for a gift. The gift that I asked for that I'm still going to ask for, but now I'm going to add a little something sweet for you because I want to celebrate you on my birthday too. If you listen to this podcast, if you watch it on YouTube or anywhere that you absorb, you know, consume this material and you rate and review the podcast. So you rate where there's like stars, I believe, like on Apple podcasts, and then you'd write a review and share to your stories. Now, if you do those things, you can do them just for funsies. But if you'd like a special gift, I'd like to gift you something. To get the gift, you have to take a screenshot of the share or tag me and screenshot it. You have to email me your screenshots. Email me the screenshot of the rate and review, email me the screenshot of where you shared the podcast. It could be on your stories. It could be on your feed. It could be on your personal Facebook profile and anywhere that you shared it. And when you send me that email and I see those photos of the screenshots, I will send you access to a digital course of your choice. So you get to pick from my digital courses, which one you would like access to. If you have any questions, reach out to me. I'm always around. All right, let's get into the episode. just hear it from you. Like what's the high level story of Viv? How did you get to this point where you are and, you know, running an energy centered business, a heart centered business, talking about soul contracts with babies and mothers and all the things. Oh my goodness. (laughs) Let's just jump right in. Well, it was interesting because I was sitting here thinking when we were starting, when we were preparing to come in here, I think birthing a baby is very similar to birthing a business. And I love that you're weaving them together. I I love that that's how you're doing it, that you're talking about your own experience. I listened to your podcast about the VBAC. What a journey. Well, two, what a journey. Thank you. Thank you. I agree. I completely agree. It's so much like birthing a baby. And actually for a long time, the podcast was called Birth Your Online Business. That's what I thought I saw. Yeah. Yeah. It was called Birth Your Online Business. And I invited a lot of my clients to share their business birth stories. Mm -hmm. So I did a series of business birth stories. And then recently I've kind of zoomed out and I'm like, I have so much more I want to talk about than just business. Like, I felt like I was so stuck and I'm like, I need, I need to talk about more. And so I renamed, rebranded. It's now the Nicole Joy show and it gave me full creative freedom and expression and freedom. Hence I started inviting people from from the container we're in Mm -hmm. to talk. And this month we're talking motherhood centered stuff, all things Mm -hmm. metaphysical and spiritual and motherhood. And of course, business and anything really Mm -hmm. like we are multifaceted beings. And I wanted to hear from some really powerful women that I've met through this container and get to know you more and then let my community get to hear Mm. your magic and your medicine. Mm, I love that. I love that. So the story of Viv, oh my goodness. Well, I'm a mother to two children and they're both grown. So I have a 23 year old daughter and a 20 year old son, which still blows my mind. I'm like, how did we get to 20? (laughs) like this. Yeah. I fell into energy work when I went through my divorce and Mm -hmm. I needed someone to show me why I was in the patterns and the trauma that I kept recreating. And 
I wanted a way out of the way that I was living, which was very much following the rules, doing what's expected, stuffing down emotions, not being able to ask for what I wanted. I knew there was all this under the surface, but I didn't know how to access it or how to allow it to safely come out. I kept thinking I'm going to erupt. If, if any of this starts, it's just going to be a volcano <laughs> that blows mm -hmm. open my life. And that's, un that's what ended up happening. There was so much there. And so through my divorce, I tapped into a beautiful teacher who showed me how to read energy. And what amazed me is how easy it was that it, and I think it is for everyone. We just don't maybe have the trust or the, the right guides or the space to play with energy in a way that allows us to expand it and develop it more. So I started reading energy. I found that I loved it. And then after my divorce, I quit my job. I moved in with my new boyfriend. We bought a house and I quit my job all in the same summer. When I started doing energy reading, I worked for the woman uh, for a while and then I started my own business and I've just been evolving <laughs> as I go. Yeah, that's really Isn't cool. Isn't that how it happens? Yeah. It is like, I know people who have been hanging out with me for some time in the online space. When I first got into the online business, I wasn't necessarily talking energy work. And I really, I didn't know anything about energy. I mean, this was, I got in late 17, early 18, and I didn't really start working with energy until 2019. So for a while, you know, and now the, the shift, right? So I've recently had people say like, where did you learn how to talk like that? You know, where did you find the language for the stuff you're doing and the way that you're, it's different. And I like to leave a lot of my old stuff up online for people who want to be able to go back and look and say like, oh, she didn't know it either. And so it wasn't, I wasn't born talking like, you know, I wasn't taught from a young age and I didn't know energy stuff when I was young and I don't have that experience either. So mm -hmm. this is also something that I learned much older. Um, and although it wasn't divorce, there was catalyst. I feel like for people that may have picked up working with energy, learning about energy, personal development, spirituality, there's, I find a trend that like this catalyst, these catalyst experiences in your life are like mm -hmm. the thing that moves you to that journey. Mm -hmm. And while yours was divorce, you know, mine was very much the birth of my second child. So that first be back. And while I was pregnant with her, actually, my brother died in a motorcycle accident. And my community knows this. I've talked about it on the podcast. Mm -hmm. He was 21 years old. And that was like those two moments in that year were like these huge catalysts. So I feel you that like there's so much inside. And I too was stuffing down a lot of emotion. Mm -hmm. And I had a lot of like digestive issues for a long time. Mm -hmm. And I was stuffing emotions into my gut. Like I was holding them in my gut forever, as long as I can remember. And that's been really cool too, but that's a separate, you know, conversation. I hear you. I do. So yes. And your kids being so much older, I'm like, I've only been doing this nine and a half years as parenting gig. And I, how has it been nine years already even? And I'm, I'm very underprepared for blinking and them being 20, 23. I grew up with my kids. I mean, they definitely, they were teaching me as much as I was teaching them. And I think that perspective, you know, mothering is what brought us into this conversation today. I feel like the, the ability to be present with our children and to see them as teachers, as guides, as these incredibly wise beings who happen to choose us and come have this human journey it just changes the way we parent. It changes the, the flow of the communication and it just makes it so much more magical. And it sounds like you're already doing that. You're already tuning in with yours that way, which is incredible. So young. Thank you. Yeah, they, it is. I, I luckily, I guess for us, you know, that this is part of our journey. I say luckily, but it's what's meant to be happening on our journey that it all kind of happened when it did because I was able to approach parenting very differently. And I often feel like my first kid may have, have had a different mom than the second <laughs> and the third. And there's a little bit of guilt in that. And then I was like, no, because his soul chose to have that version of me. And this one chose to have that version. So I, I had to like, the guilt's not helping. So no, we're not doing that. But they are little teachers. And I was actually telling my community in, um, so I host I'm the founder of the evolutionary business school and I hosted. And so we have regular small group coaching calls. So yesterday we were talking about, do you know the old Matilda movie? Way back. It's old. <laughs> Way it's back. Old. It's kind of creepy. And my kids have been really interested in it lately. And I'm like, I don't, I, this is a really creepy movie, but we've been watching it. And one of the things you hear a lot in the, is like Danny DeVito, he's her dad in the movie, right? And he's like, 
I'm bigger. I'm older. I'm smarter. I know everything. You don't, you're little. And I'm like, oh God, how far we've come. You know, like this is painful to watch. And yeah. when I think about that, like they're not just because they're in little bodies, like my aunt says, you know, just because they're in little bodies doesn't mean that they don't know any, you know, they don't know anything. Like they're, they're people in little bodies. Yeah, exactly. When I was listening to your podcast episode, you mentioned your brother in that though, just from my heart. Yeah. That's a big shift in your life. But when you were talking about your V-backs and the different situations with each of your children, I feel like even the way that they arrive to earth and the story that we co-create with them in the birthing of the baby, even that sets the pathway of here's, here's the things they're going to be working on. Here are the ways that we're going to be weaving together. And it's amazing. All three of your children have a completely different story. Yeah. Oh, they do. Uh, I've actually, oh, it makes me like really emotional to think about because I've had to do a lot of healing work. So I actually started using energy healing for my son and for my motherhood relationship with him. Like that, he he was my motivating factor for getting it. I had no intention on using energy healing in my business or with my clients or with anybody else, with my father, like now I use it on my dad. I had no intention. Like initially it was as a mother to him, I needed a tool. And I actually did a lot of healing around his birth, like both for both of us through both of our lenses, because a C-section is very traumatic. It can be to babies. And for us, I'll say for us, it was. Mm-hmm. And for a lot of people, it can be. And for, for us, I know that it was because we were separated and I was so disoriented that I didn't know, like I didn't realize I was, I think I was asleep, but I don't know. I just remembered like being in the operating room. And then I remember being in the room where you, stay with your baby for a few days. And I woke up and I was like, well, wh- where am I? And I had no idea how I got there. I had no concept of time. I just remembered getting there and knowing that he was born at a certain time. Mm-hmm. And then I was, I looked at the clock and I'm like, oh my God, it's been several hours. Like, where is he? Where's the baby? And he was in the nursery. It was just, there was a lot and there was a lot. So thank you for, you know, recognizing that because that is another, like a lot of times I think some of my community may be a little bit newer to energy healing. They don't really realize how it, how it can be helpful. And mm-hmm. the particular one that I use, you know, I try to, it's interesting because I don't share a lot of really personal stories with my kids. Like I want them to be able to tell their own stories and mm-hmm. talk about them, but usually it's through my lens mm-hmm. and not very unique, you know, very detailed, specific things. It's hard for me to share these examples because as a one, three in human design, that's how I, how I like to teach. I like to teach through my stories and through my examples in real life. But with those things, it's like, how do I talk about how profound this is without, you know, while honoring their privacy, it's tricky, but it's happening. And I can say like sharing enough that I'm comfortable to share, like, yes, this is something I've done a lot of work on for me and him. Example, healing from C-section, the trauma to the baby and to you. So um, it has been really cool, really profound. I do want to ask you, I feel like you're really teeing it up nicely for me to be able to ask more about soul contracts and I have worked a little bit and I've been exposed to, I should say, I haven't necessarily done work on this, but I've been exposed to clients and brought people together who do this kind of thing to explore soul contracts with their unborn babies. But I'm curious to hear more about how you've experienced this and how you do it and what it's like and what are soul contracts. Oh, it's so beautiful. It's so beautiful. And a lot of, a lot of it has been through my own work. I believe when when the soul of the baby chooses the soul of the mother and the mother chooses the baby. And I believe those are the first that happen, the mom and the baby together. And then they choose the father because the father would be the next structure coming in, but the baby and the mother are the primary. Mm-hmm. And so there, there are intentions that the child wants to have in their human experience, but there's also intentions that you would have in bringing the child through. And so how do we co-create and weave those together? Mm-hmm. And There's no way with the platform you're holding and the work that you do that a soul coming to you would not be aware you're going to be teaching. You're going to be sharing messages. And because the VBAC was such a, I mean, it's such an empowering message that you teach through that. Know your body, know the way that your body can handle birth, be empowered in your choices. Don't just default to what the doctors say. I mean, you made that so clear in your podcast. And I wish I had heard that message when 20 years ago, when no one was talking to me about natural birth or about feeling 
oxytocin after you deliver. I was so medicated. I had the same shakes that you described. My body couldn't handle all of that medicine. But I believe because your soul, your children came as souls to be part of that teaching, there's a there's a level of permission or agreed upon collaboration mm-hmm. has happened or they wouldn't be your children and you wouldn't have the stories that you have. You would be teaching something else, but you're teaching this. And so there's there's a big cosmic reason that they're here to do that. And what I would be curious about is down the road, what are they here to do? And mm-hmm. how does your work and your teaching inform what they're going to be contributing to humanity in their journey, right? You create this platform. My guess is they're going to step on your platform and go beyond that. And who knows what they're going to be sharing. That is such a great thing to hear because I know what it is, what my own thing that this is poking, that it's like, oh, I know what it is because what you're saying makes so much sense. And admittedly that was a layer that I hadn't thought of yet like I knew that they chose me and I knew we chose each other like I get all of that that was a layer I hadn't really thought about because I've been so I have my own stuff around protecting their privacy so deeply it's my stuff and I know that now and it's even more like yeah and I'm at a place where I I can comfortably you know accept that and be like okay I recognize it so thank you thank you for that that was a gift and you can protect their privacy and they're still part of the story. It's both. You don't have to expose everything about them, but you can still honor what you guys created. Yeah. Uh, thank you for that. You're welcome. I have worked at all different stages. My favorite in the journey probably is the pregnancy sessions. I call them soul speak sessions. And so women and men who just want to connect with the baby before the baby arrives and get that preamble or the intention from the soul now so that they can really align with the potential together. We do a session and and it's for me, energy, when, when a soul is speaking like that, that isn't here yet, it's like, I can hear it in my head and I can see the images that they're showing me. And it's almost like they're playing out a little movie and then I'm just translating whatever is coming through. And I have no idea what that is until I'm in the energy space with the parents. Mm-hmm. And then it's just this like of magic and beauty and all of this wisdom comes through. And it's such a beautiful way. I think of, I had had that as a parent. And I know the times are right and every story is perfect, but I'm like, oh, I would have loved to have had someone come and tell me about my children before they were even born. Like what a gift that is to receive. We do that. And then usually in that kind of a session, the contracts that are shared are large life contracts. You know, I, the soul is here to travel the world or the soul is here to really explore these themes, compassion or integrity or Um, there's a message for the parents, like, I need you to live your fullest potential, because as I watch you do that, you show me the way to do it for myself. So don't make your whole world about me and everything I need, make your, your desires just as much of a priority as taking care of me. And so these reminders from the soul to the parent, I think it's such a powerful way to set the frequency of how you're going to be doing it together. Because it is, it's a raising together, right? And what a freeing thing to hear, particularly before the kids are born because of the way that we are conditioned that motherhood is supposed to be and how, you know, there's like jokes that surround the internet. And sometimes they really are increasingly irritating to me of like, you know, I put my kids in this beautiful outfit and they have this designed outfit and their hair looks this and and I put all this effort into the the kids. And then you're walking around, have a showered in a couple of days. And I just refuse, like I refuse to subscribe. I refuse to you know, like in the beginning, there was a little bit of guilt. And then I'm like, no, 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 no. Like I don't. And as of the time this episode airs, I'll have just had another episode come out where we introduce this topic too, of like the importance of, we said like prioritizing yourself, but now in our conversation, most expressed version of you and the most expressed version of me is not skipping three showers or three days, (laughs) hours. Like that's not me. Agreed. (laughs) <laughs> you know, and the most expressed version of me, this is a current thing that I, I find myself teetering on is like the most expressed version of there's also more conditioning about m- mothers in business. Like you can do it. You can push hard. You can do it. You can have it. You can build all these things and have all this support and still, and I, some of it is, yes, it can be true, but also like part of me kind of wants to take the summer off. Yeah. <laughs> Part of me wants to say June, July, and August, I would like just play, play. with 
kids and work when you feel like it and work a little. And it, it's been slow, long time coming. I'll say it that way. Like it's been a long time coming. I had a lot of resistance to that in the beginning of motherhood. I'm like, no, just because they're off for the summer doesn't mean that I'm off for the summer. I'm working, I'm working, I'm building a business, I'm building a business. And now I'm like, yeah, it's, it's a thing. But my, my most express version isn't being a hundred percent stay at home mom. Mm-hmm. My most express version is not building a business that keeps me at my desk 40 plus mm-hmm. hours a week. That's not my most express version. And I'm a projector. So like that just won't work on so many fronts. So right. I'm playing with like, well, what is the most express version of me look like, you know, mm-hmm. and can I just allow that and feel the freedom of allowing that through the lens of business and motherhood and all the ways, like if I would have known and been told that even early on, it would have really reduced a lot of the meaning that I attached to all this. Let's take a moment for a quick commercial break. So I want to share with you HoneyBook. If you have not been using HoneyBook in your service-based business, let me tell you that this thing is like simplified my life. HoneyBook is a client relationship management system. So inside of they, they had me at when you're picking the options of what your profession is, they had me at doula was an option. I was like, hello. I signed up for HoneyBook a few years ago. It beats the other CRM system that I was looking at. Starts with a D, ends with an O. It beats it like by far for me. I found that one way too clunky and tricky to navigate. And I'm in the online business space. You would think that I'm super techie and I'm really into like able to do all of these techie things. I'm actually not. I need it very, very simple to start. And then I can build on it. HoneyBook is something that has made it so simple. So when I am working with new clients, there's contract templates, there's agreement templates, there's onboarding questionnaires. I mean, anything you can imagine that you need in a CRM system is there. Click the link in the show notes. They generally have free trials that you can test it out. That's my affiliate link. I hope you enjoy using HoneyBook as much as I do. I think I've been in it three years strong. Okay, back to the episode that I attached to all the stuff I was doing. Well, and then also just the ebb and flow. You're going to have times where you are working a lot of hours in cycles in your life where you will be really committed to your business. And then others where your children will need you and you'll back off your business a little bit. It's it's all weaving. I had this beautiful experience um, in plant medicine right after my divorce. I was in the space of so much fear about how I was mothering. And in a divorce, you, you go through all the emotions of, am I a bad parent? Because now I won't see them half the time. And Well, they think I don't love them anymore. And how am I going to support them if I'm not around? I mean, it's a tearing down of all the belief systems that you hold. And so I was in this beautiful ceremony and I was asking, like, show me how I can really see my children and I in a new way that can guide me through this time. And I saw these little prisms. It was like little triangles, three of them connected. And we were flying through the cosmos. My daughter, my son, and I just like, just all, it was the most incredible moment. I just remember this whole body sensation of we're fine. This is just part of the evolution we're going through. We are interconnected souls that made these agreements that will never end. And we're just moving into the next expression. It's okay. And that image of the little prisms connected and flying through the cosmos guided me through some of the most challenging years of growth and energy work. And isn't that amazing to see it that way? Like we are intricately connected and it doesn't end just because one phase shifts into another. That is really cool. I wrote down what you said because it made me think about something that I I just started to learn about a few months ago and I haven't dug a lot into it. I have to pull up the visual, but is it like the, I'm going to probably say it wrong, Murabak or Murber? Yes. I don't know how to say it either, but yes. Yeah. Merkaba? (laughs) Merkaba? Now I want to have the word. Merkaba? Merkaba. 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 Okay. I knew I was like, it's got to be right for Merkaba. I don't know how to spell it, uh, but it was that what we're talking about? Yes. It looked like that. It was just amazing. And I can feel like that weaving. There are times that I'm in the lead with my children following. And there are times one of my children takes the lead and we're following. And then other people can weave in with that. You know, I ended up getting remarried. And so now we have the dynamic of stepfather and stepbrothers, sister. Like there's all this mm. other shift that happens, right? So I have a question for you. And thank you for bringing that up because that was something I wanted to learn. My one line likes to learn. So thank I was you. started to explore it a while, a few months ago. And then I kind of um, probably drifted off into something else. So I'm going to revisit it and spend some more time with it. Something I wanted to ask you too, you said one of your favorites are the soul contract conversations when, when couples are pregnant, I I should put trigger warning here. So trigger warning, fertility challenges, 
So have you ever worked with couples who are experiencing fertility? I have in my, when I was on more of the birth side of the business, not so much today, but at that point I did connecting with the spirits of their babies. And have you had any experience with like contracts still coming together? And that could be potentially related to the fertility struggles. Yes. And it's so emotional. It's such a, it's such a delicate walk to make with someone. I think the way that I would probably explain it best, I believe we have potential experiences that we line up before we come here. And so maybe there are five or six or eight soul contracts that we line up as a potential mother with potential souls that may come in and partner with us and be children. Once we're here, once we're living the human journey and we're in our human experience, I believe as a mother, we have the right to say, this is not the right time. I know we had a potential agreement, but with everything I'm managing in my life, I'm not prepared to walk this walk or for the soul to say, I actually don't want to go to earth. It looked great watching it, not quite interested anymore. I'm going to go somewhere else. And so there's still a matchup that needs to be agreed upon in the moment that it is made. Are we activating every single contract? I don't believe that we do. Mm -hmm. Are the potential contracts lined up? I believe so. Mm -hmm. So how, how is that? Well, that's the magic of co-creation is the unknown of being here in a human body on earth. We don't know how we're going to feel once we're here. We don't know how intense the experience is going to be. Mm -hmm. I believe even for a soul to come into the human body and be in a pregnancy is an activation for a soul. Just to go through the process of a pregnancy and be birthed and breathe air and be in a human body that exits a mother and breathes air, even that is massive activation and evolution for a soul. And so do we judge if that's where the contract ends? I don't think at a soul level, we judge that. I think in a human way, we assign a lot of meaning and pain and it's very difficult. Yeah. It's a really touchy. I agree. It's a very touchy thing. It's a really emotional thing. And we're human and we have human emotions and, you know, we feel things. And I I've held clients virtually through conversations like this, that I didn't necessarily do the soul contract work and, you know, connecting with their spirit babies, but more held them through after they've had it. And then we've talked and just space. And it is, it is probably some of some of the hardest conversations, biggest emotional stretch for me ever to have this kind of conversation. Mm -hmm. Separate thing is that I'm wondering what your experience has been like. So several mm -hmm. years ago, I'm going to try to say it really fast just so that my emotions don't catch up with me and I can speak it without it getting stuck right here. Um, so several years ago, I was at a retreat and there was somebody there who connects with, she was talking about, she, one part of her work at the time was guiding people through dying. And I had mm -hmm. never heard of things like this. So we were just having this this conversation and apparently my brother's spirit wanted to connect and she asked if it was okay we were in a very small safe intimate space and so I was totally okay with it one of the things that came through among other things that were mind-blowing but one of the things that came through and this was a little bit earlier in my spiritual journey was that if I were to have another baby a fourth that his soul would reincarnate and mm -hmm. I was like 12 f-u-c-k like <laughs> Just had my third baby, yeah. not been a year prior. I was still very postpartum and I was very tired. And, you know, I still felt new again. I still felt raw and I was like, I can't handle this right now. Like this is too much. And I haven't really revisited it because I don't intend to have a fourth, but I'm wondering what you've experienced with souls who reincarnate and how, how that comes into choosing a mother. Is that part of this? Mm, absolutely. I do feel like we travel with many of the same souls and we come back and forth and play in different roles and different times. I absolutely believe that. I don't know if I'd want to share this story because they're so personal to people. You know how what I would say, here's what I would say more than anything. I believe when a soul exits earth and they're no longer in the human form, they have a new way of communicating with us. They have a new way of speaking and sharing and guiding. And so is it necessary that your brother is in another body that you're around all the time in order for you to connect with him? I don't believe that. I think he could be energetically anywhere around you at any moment. He could show in 20 different signs. He could talk through 50 different people. And if he has to be limited to one human body again, is that his greatest expression? We don't know. He, he might have more fun playing with you energetically. Now that you know how to read energy and you know how to connect, he may have 
so much more fun connecting that way instead of in a body that's limited that has to be in one place and it's mm-hmm. it shrinks it. <laughs> I think it's beautiful that that was offered to you and that you could sit with it and decide if you wanted to make that choice. But I don't know that that is necessary for him to be actively part of what you're doing. Yeah, I don't. I I don't either. To be honest, I'm like I I don't think we're done. I'm pretty sure I feel complete with children. I you know especially yeah. as like, my littlest one is four, right? But she they all wipe themselves. They mostly sleep. They all know how to swim. Like there's Uh, a lot of time in Florida. So swimming is required, like knowing how to swim and how to survive in the water. So like, we know how to do a lot of these things. And I feel very complete. I'll say that. And I'm turning 40 in a couple of weeks. And I just, I feel like I'm ready for a new chapter, you know? I support Um, that. So I do find it really, really cool. It's, It's all like relatively new to me in my life, right? So it's only been a few years that I've been having these kind of conversations, but I find it really, really cool. And the soul contracts and how cool for people to be able to do something like that during pregnancy. I know a lot of my community are birth workers. And so I'm excited for them to hear more about this too, as we start to spread the word about taking their clients, exposing their clients to more a deeper, richer motherhood experience beyond being the doula and being a doula is incredible. Like that changes lives forever. And then for the people who are open to it, taking them even deeper. So here's what I would really share. If the conversation is going to doulas and to people who will be working with pregnant mothers, I believe the greatest gift that we as energy healers or guides can offer our humanity right now is to help the current parents heal before they have more children so that when the children are birthed into their reality, they're not passing on the trauma that they haven't worked through on their own. Because we all carry that, whatever our lineage is, whatever the patterns were that our parents set in place that we've inherited that we don't even realize, we just send it right through to the next generation. And for you, for example, to have done the work between baby one and baby three, to find that empowerment within yourself, you're right. Baby one and baby three have very different DNA pathways, stories, patterns that are set inside of them. And none of them are wrong. Both children chose you at the age they did. So I don't think any of it is by mistake. But what if we can start bringing through more healing for parents so that by the time the child is even in the amniotic fluid, the fluid is different. The stories that the mother is thinking and putting into her body are different. The words coming out of her mouth are different. The conversations around her are different. The involvement of the father is different. When all of this is starting to shift and then the baby's brought in, it's like the trajectory is completely different than what it was with the trauma. And that's not to judge any of us who have had babies without that shift, but what if we could make that possible now? Like how incredible would that be? You basically just sold my my new um, program for me. I'm teaching in early May, a motherhood decoded <laughs> workshop effectively. So there's a motherhood decoded healing the line. So I have an in-person version and a virtual version. That's really what the conversation is about is healing the maternal lineage, you know, healing the line, healing the stuff that you may have been exposed to in the womb that was your mother's, your grandmother's, your great grandmother, like all of that trauma and information and healing it to the origin. And so I'll be doing a guided healing meditation to go back that you can use, people can use as often as they like um, with the replay to continue to work on healing the line. But, and it's not just for mothers, right? Like you, anybody, uh, anybody who came from a mother, right? So everybody, everybody, heal the line and it shows up and it impacts. Yes. I I'm like, and we're both doing our own flavor of motherhood work coming up. And I love that we're, you, you shared with me outside of this recording that you're doing something starting in May also. And I mm-hmm. felt very motivated to put something together for May a couple months ago, because I feel like every mother's day just comes and passes so fast. Mm-hmm. And I always feel so disappointed that like, I look around and so much of what I see is brunch, brunch, brunch. And I'm, I'm like, I'm just I, enough with the brunch. Like we all like to eat, but I yeah. like to eat shit. I'm a projector. Mm-hmm. I'm a one three. I want to go deep over food. Sure. Yes. We can eat while we go deep. That's even better for my digestive system, but anyway, fascinating stuff. So we're both doing our own flavor back to that. Like we're both for May and I'm so excited because this is one of many podcast episodes that we have like interviews over the next month or so of other women from the container we're in just talking about motherhood stuff. And I'd like to share your 
link in the show notes of where people can connect with you and find out more about your work and then learn about your upcoming program. If you want to tell more, please do. Sure. Yeah. I'm so glad you're doing something. That's amazing. I think the more of us who are having these conversations and magnetizing people into this kind of healing space, the better. I hope everyone is doing something high level like that at Mother's Day. The series that I'm doing is called Loving Ourselves. And so Mother's Day weekend, we look at loving our mothers. Father's Day, we look at loving our fathers. And then in July, we look at loving the inner child. And so they all morph and flow one into the next. Mm -hmm. I believe the mother is the primary contract. That's why I start with that. And then we bring in the father for the soul contract. And then we look at how did the patterns that were set when we were children play out as we grow up. And now here we are grown up children still doing the same things that we did when we were a little child and how do we go back and soothe and honor what that little child actually needed that maybe the child didn't get from the mother and the father, not because they were wrong, but they either didn't know better or didn't understand. I didn't understand until I learned energy, how much I was missing the boat on what I could have provided for my children. Mm -hmm. And so there's work to do on ourselves as adults. Like you said, we come from a mother. So every one of us needs to know loving our mothers as a frequency. Mm, I love it. Here's my question for you. So what, what would the highest outcome look like for you? If someone comes to your event, is it a whole day or a couple hours? It's a half day. As of right now, it's a three hour event. So they come in, they're with you for three hours. You guide them back to the origin of their mother. They have an experience. They leave. Like what is the highest outcome you could hold for the people who come? I really visualize them being able to continue to do the ongoing healing as needed, but then integrate and embody and really change the way that they show up as mothers and Mm -hmm. the way that they navigate motherhood from a more healed place and that they're not carrying the baggage that they came into this world with, you know, through ancestral in this particular conversation, like through their lineage, that they're not carrying that and acting with that in their DNA, but instead acting from a clear heel space that's their expression of motherhood and Mm -hmm. changing the way that they approach relationship with their children and changing all the beliefs and all the stuff that we've been taught. So yes, it starts there. It starts with that three hour event, or if it's the workshop online, it starts with that, however long it ends up being online. But it's, my hope is really that this is like an ongoing and continuing to expand experience. Like this is the start. My big picture hope is that it completely rewrites their story. So two things, can I offer these to you? Yeah. One is you need to be able to provide the resources for them to continue expanding and healing. So whatever the next steps are, they're going to need you walking with them through that. So make mm-hmm. sure even after the activation, you have the next offering ready for them. Yeah. And then the other, when you were brought back to your origin, yeah. so whatever experience has shown you this process, when you went back to your origin, what was your emotional shift? What was your aha? If you want to share. I don't know that I'll share that. <laughs> you don't have to. Was there a feeling? Do you want to share the feeling of it? Okay. How can I put it into words? For me, it felt very much like an awakening to what's truly inside, like a remembering of like, oh my God, like it was very much a remembering of like, this is all BS. Everything we've been taught, everything we've picked up. Like, it's just, it's almost like I, I put, okay. When I was 14, I got contacts for the first time. And up until 14, I felt like everybody couldn't see what I couldn't see, right? Because I couldn't see the board at school. I couldn't see leaves on the trees. I couldn't see the name of street signs. And Mm -hmm. I thought that was normal. And then something happened. And I guess I was complaining enough that my head was hurting from squinting. And so my dad took me to get contacts. And I remember in the car on the way home, I was like, oh my God, look at all these leaves. (laughs) Like you were supposed to see that? I didn't know you're supposed to see the leaves from this far away. And I could read the street signs. And I found myself like, I was reading license plates. I'm like, gee, X, Y, Z, Y, da, da, you know, and I was so excited. (laughs) And this is very much what that feeling was like. It was like, I put on these glasses and it just cleared the fog. And I'm like, it's like, you can suddenly see so clearly. And it, that's very much maybe a weird example, but I think, okay. I hope it lands too. Like that was what it felt like. It felt like I put contacts on or glasses on for the first time. And I was like, and suddenly, and then it, and then it was like you said, you know, carrying somebody forward. I had somebody carrying me forward through that experience as well. And I'd like to be able to do that for people too. And I've done it for other clients in private containers, but I'd like to do it in a broader way to continue to hold people through navigating life with these new glasses. 
because it's not just the activation moment, right? It's like what happens with the old knee jerk stuff in the middle of a tantrum or a meltdown or the kids being kids. And you have moments where you, that knee jerk old reaction, you're like, wait a minute, what? But that doesn't feel right anymore. Oh, that's because I, I changed that. So it's not, it still shows up. Things still show up. So having somebody hold you through that longer term, more than a three hour experience is vital. Yeah. I think the key is the remembering the being aware of what is true inside. Like that's all the words I'm using also in how I'm inviting people. It's, can we remember that we chose to come be a soul in a human body? Mm-hmm. Can we remember that we chose the mother and the father that we're walking this life with, no matter what our current belief is, mm-hmm. we chose them because they're teaching us something. And that shifts the whole perspective of so many stories, right? Yeah. I'm so excited for people. This is going to be amazing. They are in your container. I want you to just like open it wider. Don't even put the little protection around it that you have right now. Just be like, everybody needs this. Everybody needs to come and experience this remembering. It's such an exciting, profound thing that you're offering. Thank you. Same. And this has been a soul (laughs) nourishing conversation. So I appreciate you so much for having the, taking the time, creating the space for us I'm going to share all of your stuff so people know where to connect with you and, you know, stay in touch and I'll be staying in touch. So uh, thank you again so, so much. Thank you, Nicole. So good to meet you. Okay. Bye. Bye. Thank you so much for taking time out of your day and listening to this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you found value in what I'm sharing here. And if you did, can you do me a little favor and go and rate and review this episode? I will share a link in the show notes so that it's really easy to rate and review this podcast. It would mean a lot to me as this is truly a passion project. Have a beautiful day and I will see you next week.